Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Priyanka Sharma, PhD student, IME IIT Kanpur. I am working under Professor Raghunandan Sen Gupta, who is the instructor of this three module course, and this is DADM part 2. So far, uh, sir has uh, discussed uh, different uh, decision making models uh, which come from uh, statistics, probability, utility theory, um, and other uh, decision making uh, techniques. Uh, what we are going to cover in this lecture is uh, how uh, quantitative methods are utilized in making some of the marketing decisions. So, in the previous lecture, we discussed about uh, using Bayesian approach in predicting demand, in uh, making predictions about uh, what should be the optimal pricing strategy before we launch a product in the market. And we also touched upon some of the purchase and incidence related models as far as choice models are concerned or brand choice models are concerned in the marketing domain. Uh, this particular uh, lecture we are going to cover uh, uh, new product launch and uh, to understand how uh, the demand will vary for any particular product which is launched in the market through a model which is uh, very widely known as the Bass model. It was developed by Norton and Bass and henceforth we, uh, it is termed as a Bass model uh, after the person who originated that. So, uh, before a firm launch a product, uh, they need to estimate at future sales, profits and what is the impact on the firm's objectives. So, every firm has a particular vision and mission. So, the product that they are going to launch in the market or the services that they offer, it has to be in line with those objectives because people associate a company with certain values, certain uh, um, attributes, uh, certain associations and if the product reflects something else, then there is a dissonance in the minds of the consumers that this product is authentic, it will perform well as per the uh, associations that they make uh, with respect to the corporate name and the management team and other similar products that the company might have launched in the past. So, a new product is adopted by customers or people who initially do not know about it. So, that is the basic uh, uh, fundamental uh, understanding about new product launch that people do not know about this product, they do not know how to use that product. So, it is the company's uh, prerogative to teach them what this product is going to offer, what problems a, that a customer faces will be solved by this particular uh, product that the company launches in the market. So, for new product adoption, uh, there are two terms which are very widely used in the marketing literature. One is diffusion process and one is the adoption process. Diffusion process is from the firm side, how the product diffuses or percolates or penetrates the market over a period of time. An adoption process is on the other side of the market, which is the consumer side of the market, which talks about how each and every consumer adopts the product in different time periods. So, accordingly, we actually uh, categorize uh, consumers into different buckets. To make it easy to understand, we will keep it in two forms like innovators and imitators. Innovators are those uh, set of consumers which are very innovative, they are likely to adopt the product based on the advertising or um, the marketing uh, uh, communication that firm has done and they like to try out different new products in the market. So, uh, they, they do not uh, 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 refer to any friend or they do not look for any experts to recommend that product, but they have their intrinsic motivation to try out new products which are launched in the market. 
The other set of consumers which we know now which are known as imitators they actually bank on innovators plus other set of customers who would have tried that product to give them a recommendation that yes this is worth trying and they should adopt and purchase this product. So, Bass uh, in 1969 came up with this paper in management science which is a very highly cited paper and there he gave this model which is termed as Bass model. So, it what it does it it forecasts the first purchase of a new product for which no closely competing alternatives exist. So, we assume that there are no substitutes for this uh, particular products. Yes, there are different variations which have now come up which also take into consideration the substitution effect, um, game theoretic effect and so on and so forth. But to make it uh, easy to understand, we are going to study the standardized pass model and it, the, it aims to answer the question how many customers will eventually adopt the new product and when? Because as a firm, you have to allocate budgets to your development and commercialization of a product. So, unless and until you know that there is a sustained demand in the market, uh, you may end up in a loss. Because a lot of these products which are launched in the market, they fail to generate the necessary demand and then they are likely to be shelved by the companies. So, what is the outcome of a BAS model? For example, this is the sales for room air conditioners um, based on data. I have taken this from um, a paper uh, from uh, literature. So, the sales versus year. So, you can actually see the dotted lines are the actual sales and this the smooth curve which you see this is actually predicted by the BAS model. So, you see this is more or less similar to the actual uh, sales that the AC market saw in this particular uh, time period. So, there are certain assumptions like in any other statistical or decision making models. So, we have certain assumption in the BAS models that diffusion process is binary. So, either you adopt or you, you do not adopt that particular product. And there is a constant maximum potential number of buyers. So, M is the maximum number of buyers for that particular product. Eventually, all M will buy the product. So, we assume that all of these customers are going to purchase that product. So, basically, if you draw a cumulative sales diagram, so it would look like this. So, over time, all of these customers will purchase. So, this is the uh, probability of uh, purchasing that particular product. There is no repeat purchase or replacement of the product. The impact of the word of mouth is independent of the adoption time and there is no substitute effect which I already discussed about. So, the mathematical formulation of the BAS model, there are two important decision factors in developing the BAS model. One is P, one is denoted as Q. P is the coefficient of innovation or external influence and Q is the coefficient of imitation or coefficient of internal influence. And the number of customers who will purchase the product at time t is P multiplied, multiplied by the remaining potential plus Q multiplied by adopters multiplied by the remaining potential. So, P are the ones who adopt on their own, Q are the ones who are actually influenced by other adopters and word of mouth to be able to purchase that product in the next time period. So, um, you can use uh, programming in R, you can use uh, even Excel sheet to actually come up with this uh, model. So, I will show you how it is done in Excel sheet. So, here I have uh, this Excel sheet, uh, this is a simulated data. So, um, we need not um, uh, worry about the authenticity or it does it actually represent any product, but I just wanted to tell you how uh, the model would look like or the outcome would be. So, I assume that uh, there is a, a market size, there is um, some number of uh, customers which is the maximum number of customers that would ultimately purchase this particular product. And I values for P and Q. Uh, in general, the average values for P would be 0.38 and for P would be somewhere around 0.02, but it actually varies with different sector. For example, for high tech sector, for uh, electronics and 
for um, say uh, microprocessor chips the p value of p could be 0 0.001 as well. So, it can vary from uh, different values, but it is always greater than 0, it is not uh, less than 0. So, here you can see I have plotted the, the sales for different years. So, in 2000 I launched the product, so there was 0 sales, qubit relative sales is 0, but then as we move on I saw that the uh, sales have uh, increase. So, the, the uh, sales is actually the number of adopters in that particular time and this is coming from the equation of the BAS model that how uh, you which is dependent on both P and Q. So, if I change the value of Q here say to uh, point 0.23 and enter then you can see that there is a change in the uh, graph of uh, sales versus year. So, what it uh, means is that the firm plots this graph which is sales versus time and it looks something like this which we typically call as the S curve. So, this looks like S, so we call it as S curve. We want to understand at what time the sales would be maximum because after that as you see the sales start falling. So, there would be a decrease in the revenue for the firm. Uh, so, that is a strategic decision point for the firm to understand whether they want to retain the product or there is a time that they come up with a new product. So, you can start with actually another S curve. So, a firm which is like an innovator type of firm, you will find actually multiple S curves originating at different times as soon as they understand that okay, this is the time at which I have reached the maximum sales for this particular product. So, that is the time that you come up with something new, a new variant of either in the same category or in the different category to stay in the business. So, now we uh, try to understand the mathematical derivation for this particular model. So, if NT is the cumulative number of adopters and M is the ceiling for the market size and P and Q we have already understood these are the different coefficients of innovation and imitation. So, the rate of adoption at some time T is given as an equation P plus Q by M NT multiplied by M minus NT. This was given by Bas in that uh, management science paper and uh, to solve it further we consider that F t is given as N t by m and F t is the fraction of potential adopters who adopt this product by time t. So, based on that we uh, come up with this equation. If you solve that equation finally, you can find out the number of adopters at time t which is equivalent to the sales at that point t. And as you see it is dependent on the total number of customers that would ultimately purchase that product, coefficient of innovation, coefficient of imitation and the time. d and t by d t gives you the point of inflection or maximum demand. So, if you differentiate that and put it uh, to 0. So, this gives you the maximum demand at that particular time T star. This is the value of T star. What is this T star? When you draw this the point at which the demand is maximum. So, this is the T star value and this makes the N T star value. So, the firm is interested in finding out at what time from now the product is going to age or it is going to decline or it is going to lo start losing market share. So, I have to plan my advertising and budgeting accordingly because if you see if for any S curve this set of customers where you see a very sluggish growth in the market share these are the innovator type of customers. This set of customers will fall under the imitator or follower type of customers and to re stay in the market you need a very high chunk of imitator type of customers so that you can stay in the market for a long time. However, their adoption is contingent on the innovator uh, type of customers. So, you need a thrust from both both the ends and there are different marketing strategies which are adopted for this particular part when you have actually launched just launched the product 
to the point where you are seeing a growth in the life cycle of that particular product. So, the what are the practical implications for P and Q for the firm? Um, so, uh, we calculated the value of uh, T star right uh, earlier. Um, now, what we do is that I am just replacing this uh, Q by P with the value x and I am trying to differentiate this with respect to x and I get this equation. So, this particular equation 1, 1 plus x minus s ln x where x is greater than 1, the root for this equation is x equal to 3.59. So, basically what it means is that for low values of x or q by p ratio an increase in key increases the time to sales peak and for high values of this the time decreases with increasing q. What it means for the uh, firm is that the product uh, that you are going to launch and the category in which it is going to compete you need to understand what is the relative values of q versus p because accordingly the, the slope will change and how sooner the product will reach uh, the maximum demand or how, how, uh, how much more time is it going to reach the maximum depend depends on the relative values of P and Q. Now, how do you estimate these parameters? You can estimate these parameters through ordinary least square procedures, maximum likelihood and um, uh, few other uh, techniques. So, uh, this is the basic bus uh, equation, bus model equation uh, for the rate of adoption and uh, uh, based on that you calculate the number of adoption uh, at any point t which is given by nt. You can uh, re, uh, reformulate this equation to come up with this kind of quadratic equation which is uh, squared in, uh, in n t i minus 1. And, uh, you just substitute uh, say alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 for p into m q minus p and minus q by m and finally, you can just solve it as a quadratic equation to find out p hat, q hat and m hat. So, this is one way to solve this equation to find out the p, q and m for the product that you are going to launch. Um, just see for example, um, you have uh, uh, different uh, yearly, quarterly sales and cumulative sales for a particular product uh, that you have observed for a certain time and you know that um, innovation rate is this and uh, imitation rate is this and you assume certain market size. So, what you can do is you can calculate the number of uh, adopters at some time t using this equation. So, in this equation you know P, you know maximum market potential, you know how many adopters were there prior to that time period. So, you can utilize this equation to actually find out the NT. So, for example, here sales in quarter 1 is 0 0.01 which is P multiplied by 16,000 which is your M and then you have uh, 0 0.41 which is q and then minus 0 0.01 this is p and similarly, so if you get a value of 160. Similarly, you can calculate the sales for different quarters and this is how you make predictions as to how the demand would be for this particular product for say 10 years or 15 years. And um, what you can do is you can accordingly plan your uh, marketing and budgeting skills and you can also see uh, that if a product is going to reach the maximum in demand in say just 5 years of time. So, is it advisable to invest into that product development or not that is also something a uh, question that the firm needs to answer. So, there has to be a good hor time horizon for the product to stay in the market and earn revenues for the firm. So, there are other different value uh, ways in which one can calculate P and Q. You can calculate P and Q from an analogous products past sales and you can calculate P and Q from various analogous products uh, whose P and Q estimates are provided. 
So, when we say analogous products, it could be a product in the similar category which other firm has launched earlier or if it other firms. So, several other could be many other firms have launched that product, similar product and you are the um, a firm which is launching that product for the first time. So, you can take uh, the P and Q values of these uh, other uh, products. I would not say these are the alternatives or these are the substitutes because when we say a product is new to the market, we assume that there is no perfect competitive product which is there in the market, but you take hints from other similar products. For example, if you are launching a, a CT scanner, then maybe you can take help of uh, say how the ultrasound machines have done in the market. So, if there was no other CT scanner prior to this and you are, are trying to launch it now, then you need to take hints from other similar medical equipments which are there in the market to make predictions for your uh, case. So, uh, for example, this is again I have taken from uh, literature. So, there is some uh, system uh, for which uh, the sales and revenue data is available for different years, what, uh, what is the sales, cumulative sales and uh, revenue which is uh, the, the product has earned over the years. So, what you uh, do is you draw a regression line. So, you draw a regression line based on this where S is the sales per year and C is the cumulative sales per year. It will come out to be something like this and you equate it to the BAS model equation which is given as A plus B N T minus 1 C N T minus 1 whole square and you can compare that the similarity between the different coefficients over here. So, once you know these uh, coefficients, you can actually calculate P, Q and the maximum market potential which the product will have based on these equations. So, this is one way to calculate P and Q once you have the sales data for a similar product in, in, in the same or a different category. If you have uh, many such products uh, whose P and Q and you know, then what you can do? You can do a weighted averaging to find out the P and Q uh, for your particular case. So, uh, in this particular case, I have ultrasound imaging, mammography, CT scanners. I have P and Q value for each of these three products which are already there in the market and I give certain weights to these P and Q values and I calculated a weighted average. Now, how I give uh, a weight uh, to to CT scanners because it is a much more recent product. So, I, I tend to believe that the behavior of product which I am going to launch in the market is more closely related with the behavior of this particular product which is recently launched and as you see the other two products which were launched much earlier than this particular product. So, I am more inclined to give a higher weight to this recent uh, product. Now, there are certain extensions to the BAS model. Uh, we first of all, we considered a constant ceiling for the maximum number of uh, customers which is M. Um, then later on, there were certain modifications and uh, certain researchers said that market uh, potential is a function of time and um, it should not be considered as a constant number. So, if you plug in that uh, uh, value of M, you get a different uh, set of uh, uh, equations uh, which if you use ordinary least squares estimation, you can again find out the p hat, q hat and the m hat considering that. So, that was one modification that you can do. Uh, another uh, modification uh, that came uh, uh, recently is use of marketing, uh, other marketing variables. For example, pricing, advertising or any other management decision variable that can affect uh, the demand and adoption of that particular product. So, uh, we take that capital XT is actually uh, that particular uh, decision variable and it is a summation of many such decision variables. So, this is something termed as generalized BAS model. Uh, the one we discussed earlier where we had constant market potential that was the standardized BAS model that was the first one to be launched in 1969 and later on in 1994 BAS along with Krishnan and Jain uh, he uh, came up with this generalized BAS model idea. Uh, so, 
what he says is that uh, uh, it is the likelihood that a customer will purchase a product at some time t given that he has not purchased that product until that time t is given by this equation where x t is the management decision variable. And in for example, to understand we consider price and advertising as two such decision variables. So, in that case this x t will be given as rate of change of price multiplied by beta 1 and rate of change of advertising multiplied by some other beta 2. We use this particular x t and uh, we come up with the adoption rate for generalized BAST model as this where x t is given as the rate of change of price and rate of change of advertising. And this x t is nothing but a summation of all such expenses over a period of time. Then uh, later on another set of uh, researchers they came up with a different concept where they said that uh, this price is also a function of time. So, now there is another extension. So, first of all this uh, adoption rate uh, depends on management decision variable x t which depends on rate of change in price and rate of change in advertising. Now, we say that pricing is also a function of time and this rate of change of advertising is also a function of time given by this equation. So, uh, with the sales process given by GBM and assuming that unit cost of 0, the profit at each instant is given by this. This is basically how you are adopting it. So, this is a rate of adoption minus all the advertising related costs that you have. Based on that, you can calculate the profits of that particular product. So, the objective function of the firm is to choosing the advertising expenditure to maximize the count discounted profits over a time horizon say 0 to t. So, you have to sum that profit from 0 to t with respect to p, q, adoption rate and other advertising expense that you have made in launching that product and you want to maximize that profit given certain conditions, given that the advertising follows a particular model here in this case advertising is an exponentially varying with respect to certain rate of advertising. Uh, the rate of advertising is uh, between uh, falling between certain numbers. So, there is a bound for uh, the rate of uh, advertisement at any uh, point in time and this is the basic Bass equation. So, the firms they, they use generalized BAS model to, to maximize their profits and identify what could be the optimal pricing strategy. So, you optimize this and you find out what would be the optimal pricing strategy. So, what would be the values of uh, pri uh, price coefficients in the BAS model so that you can get the maximum profits. These are some of the references that you must uh, consider if you want to understand more about generalized uh, BAS model and uh, uh, I hope that um, this could add some value to your understanding of how you make predictions about new product launch and sales and uh, how quantitative methods are used in marketing decision models. Thank you.